Hello everyone, my name is Bleeker, and I played 100 days in one of Minecraft's largest maps. This is Dramal, a massive 12,000 by 12,000 block survival adventure map with over 25 unique custom biomes, fully functional fast travel, over 400 unique structures, custom armors, custom weapons, non-linear main quest, and so much more. As a self-proclaimed, self-certified adventure map master, an avid enjoyer of ceramic unicorns, I couldn't resist the urge to dive in and prove that no map can best me. Will my years of Minecraft adventure map experience pull me across the finish line, or will Dramal cast me aside, as it has done so many before? Let's find out. We begin the journey of a thousand miles and a hundred days with our first step on day one. As I right click to activate our adventure, I am thrown into a life support pod. What am I doing here, you might ask? What is this place? What is the Avsys system? Don't know. My character has no clue either, as I have amnesia. By reconnecting the network to the Avsys holotext memory, we can begin to gain some insight into what's going on. I am from a race called the Dramari, and I was put in stasis, possibly for a few years, maybe longer. The Avsys system database is down and relinking the network should get my memories back. Simple. Leaving the stasis room, I come across a whole new room with trees and life in it. But more importantly, loot and resources. We'll need a lot to survive. Walking around the facility, I find even more hollow text with such encouraging messages like 12 people in stasis flatlined and stasis is an acceptable fail safe if the seal fails. Whatever the hell the seal is. From these hollow texts, we're able to discern that things might not be going so hot. I'm finishing up my exploration of this chamber when I find a stone pick above a single chiseled stone brick with the simple instructions to dig. Having no other course of action, and being a sucker for an intimate object telling me what to do, I dig. For whatever reason, I dig this out with my bare hands. I don't know why I didn't just take the pick out of the picture frame. I assume I was stupid and naive back then, but I can't know for sure. I break into a room with a lot of artwork and exposition, but I can't be bothered to understand it right now. Further exploration around the area makes it clear my only way out is to nerd pull out. Finding another chiseled stone brick, I decide to dig once again. Oh boy, hollow text! More reading in our future! According to this hollow text, if I light a fire, it will open up the big scary door and allow me to leave this underground bunker. Finding a convenient flint and iron, I craft a flint and steel, light the floor on fire, and something happens. Beyond the door, I find some stairs and leave the stasis facility and make it to the surface. Achievement got, rude awakening. With no real direction, I climb down and off the hill I emerge from and head towards the nearest convenient path. I must say, I've been in the overworld for about 60 seconds and it's already beautiful. I decided that heading towards the village of Drabel sounded like a good first step Seeing as I have no idea what to do, heading towards a supposed civilization seemed like a smart move. I do come across an abandoned chapel in the woods with some exposition on how the world came to be. And I realize in that moment, not only is this high fantasy I'm dealing with, but I will be butchering a lot of proper nouns in this playthrough as high fantasy names are a pain to pronounce. To any developers watching this, sorry in advance. Emerging from the woods, that's when I see an odd tower. It definitely doesn't belong in this kind of setting. What do we do when we see a strange tower? We climb it. On top of the tower, there's a simple push button with a sign reading Capital Valley. Clicking it, we are transported to the Terminus. Achievement got. Place between places. Walking over to a single lit area in the Terminus sets off a whole bunch of things. Let's watch. What? Wait.
I have to discover all of these warp points in order to beat the game? That's our goal of this map. Travel throughout Dramal and manually activate the towers. I didn't figure out how to do this efficiently until much later. I was given a compass for another tower to go and activate, but I didn't realize that was what it was for until after I had found and activated said tower. Fast traveling back to the capital, I continue on my quest to find the village of Drabel, knowing that survival takes precedence over activating the towers. I do make a very small detour off the path when I see a monument of sorts, where a very important mechanic gets reinforced. Anytime you see a chiseled stone brick, dig there, you will find hidden loot. As night begins to fall, I find a small campsite at a crossroads. I find some various loot, including scale, which is the currency of this land. Not wanting to have to fight mobs, I go to sleep and call it day one. Day two. Waking up from a well-deserved sleep, I continue on my path to the village of Drabel. Making a quick stop at a little shrine to grab some hidden loot. What is a ruined catalyst, you might ask? Don't know. What is it used for? Trading. I... I, I think that's what it's used for. In the distance, I see the village of Drabel. And what a cute little village it is. I poke around the different vendors threaten them for better deals, steal people's hard-earned belongings right in front of them, you know, normal adventure map shenanigans. I do come to the determination that this town is now my home base. I make a room in the tavern, my temporary base, to drop off some of my excess crap. It's time to quit wasting daylight and go on an adventure. Maybe I'll figure out why I'm here. I'm not gonna do that today because it's time to sleep. Starting day three with a lovely trip down this random path, trying to find something, anything. And that's when I spot it in the distance. Something. Trying to get a better look at this clearly man-made long abandoned structure, I find another little camp. That's when I hear pillagers. Dear God, why is it pillagers? I climb into their treehouse to have a debate on how alive they should be. They argue for their continued existence, I take the opposite hardline stance. My position won out. After our civil discourse, I get the remnants of Avsum achievement. Apparently, I have found the capital city. And as with most government-run institutions, it's in ruins. Locating a nearby abandoned village, I loot anything that's not nailed down. Even in what is essentially an accurate representation of Detroit, go Lions, Villagers still find a way to survive. Stopping by for a brief visit, and by visit I mean kicking down the door and looting everything that's not nailed down again, I learned that there is an industrial district that is overrun by gray skin freaks. That seems like a really cool place to visit, except I forgot that it existed until writing the script and never visited. Deciding that this is a silly place, I pay my boat launch fee to the attendant, and take a nap in the local dark tunnel. Before we continue on, these kinds of videos take a long time and a lot of effort to pull off. I probably have 40 to 50 hours in this one video alone. So if you enjoy the video, please like and consider subscribing. It is a small act, but it helps feed the unknowable and incomprehensible YouTube algorithm, which helps the channel out a lot. And if you're a map maker or a game developer and want me to play your latest creation, please, reach out to me over email or Discord. Day four, I launch my boat and begin making my way back home. After a quick stop at another dock to loot, it's back to home base. After a little bit of looting the town and engaging in trade with villagers at sword point against their will, it's time to build my house. Now, I'm no builder. At best, I can create an amalgamation of garbage that rivals the city of Hoboken. At worst, it is an abomination that was never meant to see the light of day. But don't take my word for it. Take the word of fellow YouTuber and master builder, Boss Builds MC. I asked this guy to build a dirt hut once. To save the world from the abomination that he constructed, I deleted the save file. Realizing that the save information could still be recovered, I shot the hard drive. Save. 
set fire to the whole computer, shot the ashes one more time, and buried them in an unmarked grave. I check back on that grave every three months to make sure no one tried to recover the ashes and necromancy that save file back into existence. Days five through seven, I was a man with a vision. I wanted to build a house to match the aesthetic of the village and not make something that would be best described as an affront to God. I gathered resources, dug out a foundation, laid out the foundation, and slowly a shape began to emerge. On day eight, I came to the realization that I was in way over my head. To remedy that, I reached out to the best Minecraft players I knew to join me on my quest. Unfortunately, none of them responded. Even more unfortunate for me, fellow YouTuber and one of the best Minecraft builders I have ever met, Time Architect, answered the call. Link to his channel in the description down below. He does some truly amazing builds and content and is really underappreciated. Anyways, I didn't actually invite him, he just kind of showed up, and well, I was desperate. Us two combined are like the mighty golden retriever. We look good, but there's not a lot going for us in the brains department. Day nine, we continue to work on the home base while I give time the lowdown on what I think we've got to do to beat the map. But uh, so I was so I messaged that dev like, "Hey, I'm confused. What's my actual goal?" And you know that um, spire that I showed you? Mm -hmm. We have to find all of those. <laughs> That's so we goal. have to un unlock all of those gateways or whatever. Yeah. So essentially, we have to, uh, very simply put, explore. That's when I have the brilliant idea. Our beachfront should have a dock, and I built an absolute banger of a dock. Or at least the start of an absolute banger of a dock. On day 10, we found time's true calling in life. Bless your heart. <laughs> oh, Congratulations, you are not. you are my timekeeper. My my what? time architect, if you will. <laughs> I see what you did there. Time is now the official vice assistant manager in charge of keeping track of what day it is. Also on day 10, I put the finishing touches on my dock. And if I do say so myself, it is not an abhorrent abomination worthy of the old gas can match combo. We also finish our home base, and it doesn't look too bad if I say so myself. On day 11, Time decides it's already time for an addition to the home base. While he's doing that, I get to work on moving everything indoors and start organizing. Checking back in on Time, he's made this really cool outdoor forge area, and now he's putting holes in my house. It's okay, I'll pass it off as an open air concept and some poor home buyer will think it's trendy and pay 20% more. Rounding off day 11 with a little bit of farming since food is important. Day 12, more farming, cause cannibalism is frowned upon in most societies and I don't have an eat time architect option. Finally, with the home base complete, food collected for the adventure and tools made for convincing the local population that they don't want to exist anymore, it's time to go find some towers. Adventure! Let's do the thing. The thing we finally came here to do on four days later. Guide on. At this point in the adventure, we know we need to find the towers, but we don't know how to effectively do it. Landing on a dock near the capital, it's time to investigate. Remember when I said that Time and I together have the IQ of the average roasted peanut? I'm getting some very high level fantasy. Is friendly? Fire on? Nope, we're good. <laughs> All right. All right. Test Wait succeeded. A 
Walking through the ruins of this once great civilization, it's like being a Cleveland Browns fan. Depressing. Oh look! Hidden loot spot! That was nice. Exploring further into the ruins, it looks like our only way forward is up. Parkouring our way up, we come across these beautiful remnants of a chapel, or place of worship. The developers of this map really know how to craft a beautiful environment. This definitely looks like some sort of temple. Yeah. Oh, look at that hidden chest. Nice. Ooh, for you, you, my go. friend. Yeah. Oh, that's for you. So you'll notice I I... that. So you'll notice that they actually have like descriptions and stuff. I think that's part <clears> of the resource pack. Something really cool to mention here is that there are custom armors and weapons with lore and special enchantments attached to them scattered all across the map. Day 13. Noticing a fortification with some stairs, we climb. Upon reaching the fortification, there is actually a little castle complete with a throne. Do we respect the sanctity of this relic of the ancient past? Hell no! We kick the door down and loot everything inside. I do appreciate this nice view I managed to capture, though. Hey, look at this thing! I don't know what it is, but it seems neat. Getting to what I assume is a really elaborate staircase, it's a long way down. Time and I choose to take the express way down. Not too bad for a day's work. Day 14. Continuing to make our way back to home base, Time and I try to figure out what to do next. I think our next goal is to either go try and find more of those spires or like hit that villager city or the, okay. uh, the pillager city. I think we should hit that pillager city. That's kind of what I'm leaning towards too. Dumping our stuff back at home, we mentally prepare to take on the unwashed masses at the pillager city. We plan on saving them from their horrible fate. Living. We adventurers are a noble breed and would never stoop to something as low as grave robbing. Right? The word grave robbing is too harsh for me. I prefer reappropriating. This is perfect. Oh. Oh, yes. It's time. It's time? Yeah. I'm We're stooping to that level now, aren't we? I'm gonna rob this man's grave. Oh, let's see here. Rip. They the rest with his own blade. Oh, yeah. Look at that. There's even a chest. Nice. Well. Oh, yeah, need to break the other. All right, here we go. Oh, that's disappointing. An iron sword. Well, you know what? You know, we've already stooped to that we've level. We've already I stooped mean. to this level. Like Reappropriation. Time to go to the capital, kick in the door, and kill everyone inside. We arrive at the capital just before sunset. Naturally, we are required to speak to the harbor master about paying the docking fine. We have a slight disagreement about the amount of the fine I should pay. Ultimately, he let it slide this time. Day 15. The assault on the capital begins. This is a massive area with a load of mobs to kill and tons of loot to not really know what to do with. Look, time got an achievement. Proud dad moment. Everywhere we looked, there was just something new and exciting that wanted to give us a proctology examination with a bow and arrow. All right, I see a guy. Oh. oh, coming to you. Nice. So if we oh, another guy, another guy. Split duties. Careful, there's a. Uh, I hear one with an axe. There, there he is, coming. Who's the Agrodon? You or me? You. Oh, convenient. As you can see, it's stiff resistance. Things really start getting interesting when we get into the castle. Anything good? Oh, there's a stone. Nope. Oh, that's not ominous at all. That's really bad. Oh, uh, come in. That is an enchanted bow. Ow. Got him. Didn't drop it. 
I see one guy. Right behind you. Oh, I got another guy with, uh, coming up. Got him. Nice. Oh, man, Maybe. I hear all kinds of stuff next to us. All the mobs. Oh, look at this. Ooh. Handy. Dude, there's something in there glowing. His crossbow is glowing. No, there's, like, sparkles. Oh. What those sparkles ended up being was another hollow text, but it isn't working. We'll come back to that one later. Something interesting is just up ahead as we find a door that is just a little too posh for this neighborhood. How do we open it? What does it do? Can we break in? How do we get all these hollow texts to work? Don't know. Stop asking. These are questions to be slept on. Day 16. We still have the upper parts of the capital to be explored the mysteries of the holotext, and the big posh door to be figured out. Oh look! Hidden loot. Look! Time's making friends again. Now enjoy this moment of rare praise I give time, and then watch karma make me immediately regret it. Temple? Oh, whatever. Yeah, no, no, it's a courthouse. Look, the scales. Oh! Good job, man. I would have never seen that. Watch, Hello. watch out, spider. Oh, it broke my pants! Rest assured, I treat time extremely poor after this moment and never break another pair of pants again. That's when we see another tower. What the hell is this? That, that looks Wait, like... Wait, is that... Did yeah. we find another... That's what it looks like. That's what it looks like indeed. Okay, um... Dude, we did it! Nice. That might be a... Oh, there we go. Same thing. Okay. Nerd pulling our way up, we do in fact confirm for ourselves that this is a tower. At this point in our adventure, we are still very new to the idea of finding these towers, so there's still a lot of questions in our mind, such as, do all these towers look like the one we found in Capital Valley? Dude, this feels so good. Like, I just feel like we made progress. <laughs> Progress. Oh, literally the perfect amount. Well, would you do the honors, my good sir? Let's do it. The terminus. The terminus. So I wish I knew like where we were on this map. 6.3% of the towers are discovered. Now you see us eyeing up this map. Each one of these torches represents the location of a tower. At this point, Time and I don't know where we are on the huge map and how to effectively navigate around this world. Something that will contribute to a later huge misadventure that we had. We also notice that with each tower that we activate, a little light indicator comes on by its teleport point in the Nexus. A neat little added feature. Returning back to the capital city of Avsol, we immediately run over to see if the holotext is working now that the tower is connected back to the Nexus. Strangely, it is not. Time killed a named pillager and got a really cool sword. You never know when good loot is going to fall into your lap in this map. That's when I see an orange button like back in the stasis chamber. Pressing it brings all of the local holotext back online. Feels good to have things working again. Oh look! Lore, but that'll have to wait for day 17. It feels good to make some progress. Now about that hollow text. Essentially, what's going on is we have an energy grid connecting all these areas. Nice job, team. In the big dome where the reinitialization button was, we get some more lore. Shit's broke. Yet another one. This one reads like the kingdom is too big to fail. Clearly, their recreation of the 2008 financial market would disagree. Running back downstairs, there are a few other hollow texts we need to read. This one says to open the door, we need to pull the same fire trick from the stasis chamber, given what we have stored down there. So if you follow me, oh, in the first holy. episode, I had to break out of one of these things. And to do that, I had to light a fire. So oh. if you take your flint and steel, maybe just throw a fire down somewhere. Ha! What? Yep. And then it opens up the glass. Oh. 
falling down into a huge hole in the ground, we come across something important. Welcome to the repository, a place where important holotexts we discover on our journey will be kept. But the real important part of the facility is in the back. Oh, we got particles. Yeah. Right behind me is the... Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, not, knock yourself out. Is the, right behind me is the pinnacle of Islamic weapons technology. Well, the hit, hilts of it, at least. Currently, the other pieces are being kept separate in secure R&D locations. Hamas uh, insisted that they be separated until we can effectively charge it. Says it's too dangerous if someone managed to steal or attempt to use it improperly. We have such good security, I don't think this is much of a risk, but it's his project, so he calls the shots. This is one of three parts of a powerful weapon. One that can contain an obscene amount of energy. One of the most fascinating features of the weapon is just how powerful it can become. While simply connecting the fragments would lead to a formidable blade, it only reveals its true strength when exposed to a significant quantity of primal energy. Current tests have attempted to find the upper limit. Hmm. How do we... are we allowed to use this thing? The answer to that is no. We need to find two other pieces of the weapon at two other facilities. There's nothing more for us to do here yet. We'll be back, but better equipped with more knowledge. Seeing as night has fallen, it is time for a well-earned rest. On day 18, time never stopped moving on the server when we logged off, so it was night when we logged back in. Today, it's a wash. Day 19, as we are leaving the capital, since it is a silly place, Time and I make our way back to home base. I also had the clever idea to set up our base next to a teleporter so we didn't have to travel so far to dump off our stuff, but that never happens. Getting back to base, we dump off all of our crap and make a few additions to help make sorting a lot better. We added a real special loot chest for all the stuff that's, well, real special. Today is the day I came to a fantastic realization. You can cook potatoes on a campfire! Oh, genius. Did you know that? I, like, never use a campfire, so no. Neither do I. But it's so... But it ugh, makes me happy. It is confirmed. I can feel happiness. Today was just a really nice prep day for our next expedition. Day 20, I finally realized what the compass does that got dispensed back in the Nexus. Interesting. That actually pointing towards something? Yeah, so it gives me the coordinates here of negative 228, 106, 1640, but if you hold it in your hand, it's actually a compass and points you to where you need to go. Huh. So if you like, it's like turn or yeah, go straight. So that is another like waypoint, but I don't know which where it's pointing to. That's like where we just came from, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. The compass points towards Avsol and the beacon we already visited. What I found out later is that it's supposed to function as the first dungeon. The fact that we accidentally found it is purely coincidental. At this point, we really didn't have a destination in mind. I was in contact with one of the devs, Hiscotti Biscotti, in between recording sessions, and she made a few recommendations. Like, man, you just gotta get lost in nature, man. You know, just like grab your homie and go for it. You just gotta get lost in it, man. Find the towers, man. The best way to do it is to get lost in it, man. Just vibe with it, man. This led to a 20-day in-game expedition that didn't net time and I any progress. What kind of name is Hiscotti Biscotti anyways? Quick, everybody, boo her username. <laughs> Time and I decide to head into the Heartwood to see if we could find a tower over there. When playing this map, I absolutely love how each one of the lands in the map is distinctly different from each other. Like here's where we made the jump from Capital Valley into the Heartwood. The environment is completely different. Journeying deeper into the Heartwood, Time and I come across a little village. 
Nothing of real note in here, just some supplies for the road. That's when I see something off in the distance. Remnants of an older town. Maybe remnants is too generous of the word. More like the town is cosplaying as the city of Detroit. This town has really seen better days. Exploration of the town continues into day 21. I found a weird hole in the ground that led to an abandoned mine and this weird abandoned shrine. This area is just strange. What happened here? Time and I do spend some time down here searching around before we head back up. It's like an earthquake happened. It's not very... The, gro the ground split open? Yeah. Houses are collapsed? Houses are... I would go so far as to say houses are sunk into the ground in some spots. Yeah. This place got be it, messed up, man. Be it oddly, that one shrine was sunken down without any damage. Oh, here's the opening to the mine right here. That's when I stumbled across the answer to what happened here. Essentially, greed caused these people to dig too deep, and their town suffered for it. Definitely liked the lore of this place. Yeah, they got greedy, like, dug too deep. A very classic about, cautionary tale. Right? I'm, gonna say, I'm getting Mines of Moria vibes. What did you do? We dug too deep! Have you literally never read any classical literature? Mm-hmm. Leaving the Heartwood and getting back into Capital Valley, we decide to call it a day. Day 22, Time and I decide to cross over a small river and investigate where an old dock used to be. At this point in the map, Time and I are under the impression that paths and roads will eventually lead to towers. We were very wrong. This particular path leads us to a little abandoned home. Inside, we find a spider spawner and a couple of loot chests. Climbing up the stairs, we find some scale. Our currency is good. Continuing on the path, we find something interesting. Oh, oh what do you see? I'm not sure what I'm looking at. Old framing? I don't know. It looks significant, though. Looks oh, no, there's more. Oh, wow. <laughs> this looks ancient. This looks important. As best as time and I were able to figure out, this is a place where you can make offerings to deities that inhabit this realm. That's when time and I get an interesting achievement. Deja vu. We've been here before? But for what reason? I won't leave you in suspense. We never figured it out. There are some nomads around the area that we can trade with and, more importantly, liberate their goods from them. Climbing to the top of the ruins, we find a place to make offerings to the local god. Did you... Do you have that message on your screen? Which one? Uh, I just threw a book that was one of these things sitting here, and it gave me a message saying, Your offering fills the room with a pleasing aurora. Your devotion to Ive has deepened slightly. Maybe try picking up that gold thing and tossing it on there. So, I'm devoted. Go me! Time found some ruins beneath the existing ruins, so we poke around down there to see if there's anything of value. We don't explore for too long as night is falling fast. Day 23, we end up finding a different entrance to the underground ruins. I really love what they did with the place down here. As it turns out, it's a small underground prison. Leaving the ruins, we decide to take one more crack at that god offering area. We found a bunch of offerings on the ground. Maybe it's enough to please the gods. That shake weight thing. Let you get all of the, yeah. the favor. Let's, yeah, maybe it'll... Maybe he'll be Turn happy with me. Yeah, and then we take the... Sh maybe he'll give us something, and then we can use the shake weight thing. Uh, here, hold the... Goal. I just want at least a few open inventory spaces, just in case. Oh, he I liked that. Know. Didn't mighten that at all. He likes that. Whoa! By offering enough items to the altar, we got a blessing. Honestly, kind of a terrible one. 
giving us a plus 5% move speed for a minus 10% attack. But it's the thought that counts. Day 24, Time and I try throwing more stuff at the altar to see if we could get another blessing, but to no avail. Time to keep on moving. We find another trail and follow it to see where it leads. Oh look, a chest inside a box. Oh look, loot inside a chest inside a box. Even out here in the middle of nowhere, life finds a way. This is genuinely a really nice little town to kick the door down and loot everything inside. I love how it's set up. Ooh, I love how they did their little farm set up here. That's when something catches my eye. Ooh, signage. It looks like there's a, a square on top of that mountain. That definitely looks like a square on top of that mountain. Village of Sovol. Oh, it's bedtime. Yep. Oh, my bedtime already. On day 25, we come to a short period in this 100 days where time and I don't find much stuff. However, here are the high points. We get to the top of the mountain and find a runic catalyst. We make ourselves a couple of boats and go upriver. We end up finding a bridge full of dead pillagers. Well, after we left, it was a bridge full of dead pillagers. We catch a path off of the bridge and explore in that direction until ultimately the path ends. Finding a nice hilltop, we make camp. Day 26 is filled with more traveling. We find another abandoned structure with another runic catalyst inside. By the end of this 100 days, we'll have so many of these things, it's going to be a joke. Oh. Two people do fit in a boat. We tell no one about the we tell no one about what we've seen here today. I call Big Spoon. Oh god. I am actively working on filing a restraining order against time. Oh, check it out! Another hidden block! We do come across some more ruins. I do like how each of these ruins feels very distinct from each other. Day 27, and we're still on the hunt for some sort of tower. Apparently, the best we can find is a swamp. Oddly large tree stumps, some sort of red mountains, some really cool trees, and our beds. On day 29, that's when we see it. But does that not look like a huge tree? That is oh. one single tree. Oh, wait a second. That's either a giant jungle forest? No, that's a one tree. That is one tree. Hang on, that. I seem to recall something from one of the Lord tidbits about... Oh. There's a teleporter! It was not a teleporter. Deep within a region called Marijul is just this giant tree. It's legitimately impressive the scale of this build. Time and I figure that the best thing to do is investigate the pyramid and see what's inside. Setting down our beds and setting our spawn points, it's time to go in. We see some switches and hit them, cuz what else are you gonna do in a booby-trapped temple? We don't die immediately. That's one for the good guys. Then perhaps I do the stupidest thing I have ever done in Minecraft. Hit the switch again. Some, somebody's getting shot at. Yeah, me. Oh my goodness, they're getting shot at too. What is that? Hit the switch. We need to, the switch was deactivated the trap. Yeah, I managed to reactivate the trap that we turned off. Go me. Further into the temple, there is loot to be had and I'm quickly running out of places to put things. Deep within the temple, we stumble across a maze. Now a trick when going through mazes is to put your left or right hand on the wall and go through the maze while keeping your hand on the wall. You'll clear through every maze, every time. I'll let you know if I lose track of you. So what I'm employing is the right hand rule. Basically, if you keep your right hand on a wall, on uh, the wall, you'll eventually like explore everything. Oh! You good? I think so. Um, it 
tried to kill me, but I have... Feather falling? No, it's powdered you snow. Want me, to... you want me to open it back up? Yeah. Uh, yes, please. Thank goodness. I still had those leather boots from the beginning of the game, or I would have been S-O-L. Making our way to the end of the maze, we find a chest with a stone of agony in it. What does it do? Don't know. Moving on. Upon leaving the temple, night is just starting to fall. Day 29, making our way towards the tree itself, we quickly realize that the sun is being blocked and mobs are everywhere. That, and on the giant lily pads, they're mob spawners, further complicating this area. Getting into the tree, Time and I split up. He explores in the water, and I decide to tackle the parkour puzzle. I happen to be rewarded for my troubles with a couple of golden apples. Linking back up with Time, we go into the water and come across another cavern in the tree. Fighting our way through numerous creepers, skeletons, and spawners, there just has to be something good here. Opening into the last room of this dungeon, we find something really good. A gift from an ancient traveler. Okay, I'm going to... I don't got time to read this. Here. Oh, oh, whoa. Whoa! Parchima? Grab those, grab those arrows. Okay, let's go back up. We'll read this up there. So this isn't the Stone of Agony, this is... Unbreaking X Mending, a gift from an ancient traveler crafted by the hands of nature. It is made from the roots that resemble Dremel's flora, but contains remnants of places beyond. Uh, sub sus sustenance. When the wearer defeats an enemy, they briefly regenerate HP. Plus five armor. Legendary. What? Dude. An actual, like, helmet or something? It's a chest Looks like a Hang on. Looks like a snail. I'm wearing it. Oh, you look like George of the Jungle. Plus five armor. While I'm wearing this armor and killing a mob, I regenerate three hearts. I end up wearing this piece of armor for the whole game. As you can see, it's broken as hell. Let's see this thing in action. Those green orbs you see from the enemies, that's what's giving me back health. Day 30. Time and I have the brilliant idea to climb the tree. To our credit, we do make it to the tree without any deaths. I mean, the sheer fact we made it into this overgrown weed is impressive. The fact I managed to coordinate two people to record this series who are both over the age of 25 is impressive. The fact I have gotten off on this weird tangent on how awesome things are and you're still here is a credit to how awesome you, the viewer, are. Like and subscribe if you know you're awesome. We conclude, there's no tower here, but I'm stubborn and I want to get to the top of this stupid tree. I did make it to the top, and what do I see? An Easter egg. Dome Master, if you're watching this, I did like the tree, but I hate that I climbed it. And instead of dealing with my hatred in a healthy way, I'm going to project on you. Grr. I wish to leave. At this point, we're really confused as to why there's no teleporter around the area. Clearly, it's an important area, but with no tower in sight, it's time to move on. Now, well, where do you want to go now? I'll leave the next direction up to you. Well, we were going west. This tree is south, where we are now. You just want to go north? Or did we come from north? We came from west. Do you want to go north? Uh, north is this way. You're going south. Oh. You want to go south? Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, we have the combined IQ of the average lampshade. Southbound and down, we're loaded up and walking. I'm a little sad to be leaving this area. It was super unique and an absolute blast to explore. I'm even more sad that there is still not a tower in sight. Oh, get lost, they said. Go on adventure, they said. It's the best way to play this map, they said. All I have is anger and negative thoughts. Time and I are well and truly lost. Time has pulled up a topographical map of the area, and we're trying to figure out where the hell we are. We quickly decide that we don't know where we are, and south is our only option. Goodbye, snowy biomes. Hello, savannah biome. Again. 
I love the variety of the biomes, and how if you don't like a biome you're in, travel a little, and you're in a new one. Is that... what is that? Those tree houses? No, run away. We are not ready for that yet. What is it? Pillager. Pillager place. Well, our beds are set. Yep. Day 32. It's time and I versus a bunch of individuals with surprisingly short futures ahead of them. Even with time as a handicap, I think we still got this. Looting this place proved to be quite lucrative as I found our very first diamond. The pillagers went down quite easily. It's the Ravengers that always prove to be an issue. And this one is named. How unfortunate. Oh, time died. After killing the Ravenger, formerly known as Charlie, I find his named armor. Plus 14 health for your mount. That would be really useful if we used horses at all during this playthrough. Hey, look, ruins. They might be important. Ooh, look, hidden chest. Nice. This path takes us high into the cloud layers of Minecraft, and that's when we see it. A sign. Finally. Direction. Purpose. I don't recognize any of the names on the sign, but that doesn't matter right now. To Fort Namaj we go. I'm prepared for a long and difficult trip, and we're there. Doesn't seem completely ominous. Okay, it's oh. friendly. Nice. The old guard. Which means there will be a primal cache. Yes. There is a painting of a cat right here. Check this out. Hold on. Where did you see the picture of a cat? In and left. Oh. That's like a legit <laughs> cat. Yeah, it is. Cool pictures of cats aside, that diamond I find, I used to buy a map. Now I might be able to figure out where we are and where we need to go next. I don't actually know where to go, nor do I remember where our home base is. Oops. Crushing realization aside that even with a map we are still lost, it is but one piece of the puzzle that we need to get home. Wherever that is. Exploring around the village, looting anything not nailed down, and finding hidden caches, time finds something that makes our stop here well worthwhile. Still going down. Hey, what you Whoa! Find? What'd you find? Some sort of central, looks like a dragon skull? Neat. Uh, uh. Following Time's instructions down to the hidden room, there's a dragon skull and a chest with something inside. This is definitely something significant. Plus help. Whoa. Oh, Whoa. What is that? Hey, I was reading that for the... Oh, sorry. sorry. Put sorry. it back in there so I can read it. During the Dune Wars, male skull beasts were a terrifying threat that could level a city in minutes. This chain whip excretes a red bone-melting alchemical substance designed specifically oh. to counter oh. one. Uh, every third fully charged strike perform a circular chain slash that stuns the undead and la launches enemies, effective against skeletal enemies. Dude, there you go. Time carried this beast of a weapon for the rest of our run. After fully exploring the fort, evening is upon us. Day 34, with no discernible direction to head for a tower, we hit the river next to the fort and continue our trek south. In the theme of seeing things off in the distance, look, a new town. More importantly, a sign with potential directions. This is the town of Therax. I wish we would have made our home base here. Time and I split up. He loots anything not nailed down, and I check out the house on the hill. Oh, the Lord Minister lives here. Who's that? What's his importance, I hear you ask? Don't know. His house is really nice, though. On the second floor of his house, I find a magical iPod that allows me to play any music from the game that I want. On day 35, time continues his mad rampage through the city looting and scaring small children while I take in the sights. Leaving Thorax, we come across another ruined city with some very strange mobs inside. 
I make the executive decision to make a hasty and very tactical advance in the opposite direction to sleep and tackle this problem in the morning. Day 36, we fight the Red Menace. I'm not sure if they're peaceful or not, but better dead than red. In our acts of aggressive manual depopulation, I find a really good pair of iron pants that are unbreaking seven. I wear these for the rest of the hundred days. Time and I do find a tower in the middle of this lake. Not the teleporting kind of tower, just the normal tower-like fortification. In a chest at the top, we get another runic catalyst. Taking in the sights from up here, we have clearly entered into a more tropical area of the map. It's rather nice up here. Tropical coasts and palm trees are soon replaced with dense old growth forests. <clears throat> kind of a gnarly looking forest. This is like a serious, like ancient forest right here. I yeah. love this. Yeah, they did a really good job. This is like what I want to build. Yeah, their tree man definitely knows what he's doing. To the tree man of this map, you get a very rare Time Architect Seal of Approval. Woo! I wish I could get a Time Architect Seal of Approval. Definitely another mountain. Holy crap, that's a huge birch tree. Something shooting at me? Oh, skeletons. Run. Wait, 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 wait. Want to try something? Whoa! Oh, oh, oh. That made a big noise. That was cool. Hey, look, we finally got Time's weapon to trigger its passive. Cool. Day 37 was much the same, trying to get through the old growth forest that we find ourselves in. It's a good thing you're not like going to be playing our commentary. I'm pretty sure 50% of everything I said is either call outs where mobs are or something to do with the landscape. Yeah, well, most of it's going to get narrated over top of. Whoops, forgot to narrate over the top of that part. Oh, thank God. Beach. Finally, a different biome. Finally, a sign for the Central Plains. That's where home base is. We are maybe, finally, almost possibly home. Big giant salt licks. Village of Three Moons. Village of Three Moons. What does that mean? Oh, how about that music? Ooh. Yaman. I'm kind of yeah. kind of digging the bass. Yeah. Welcome to Mota. And if I would have known this was here, I would have built home base here. Hands down. This is a beautiful tropical village. And while I wish we could stay here forever, we must press on. Heading north, we find a place to drop our beds and call it a day. Day 38, Time and I spot a massive plateau and some floating islands. Is there something at the top of that? Is that a tower, perhaps? Making our way to the top via some very convenient water flows, we find a monument on the floating island with a cool helmet in the chest. Time also finds another runic catalyst. No tower whatsoever. A little disappointing of a side trip, that's for sure. In between days 38 and 39, I hopped onto the wiki for Dramal and figured out a whole bunch of stuff about this map and what we need to be doing. I realized that just mindlessly aiming for towers is not the way to be doing this map. That, and with the map that I found on the wiki, we finally figured out where we are in the world and where we had to go to get home. It's not that we missed a bunch, it's that their um, big map, we're look and we're looking for like a very specific thing in that big map. Mm, okay. So I don't know what district we're in right now, but we basically need to head for the... Uh, so here, if you want to... So on my map here, which I just conveniently threw to you, the blue dot was that really cool, like, village that we just uh, came from. The three, three moons or whatever? Yeah. And then the green okay. dot that's directly north, that's home. That's central so capital battle. We are literally in the center. With a goal in mind and a destination, time and I begin the trek home. After a few short minutes of sailing, we see home in the distance. From the time we started this expedition to the time we arrived home, 19 in-game days passed, almost 20% of this 100 days, and we accomplished effectively nothing. 
god, get me off of this thing. Oh my gosh, it feels so good to be home. Just the ground. Yes! Mwah, yes! Mwah, home! England! <laughs> A Men in Tights reference for all of you back home. Nothing left to do but to sort our inventories and call it a day. Day 40, Time and I work up a plan on how to purposefully find these towers. Brilliant. Yeah. So I think I've come up with a plan-ish of attack. Very, okay. Very ish. So I, digging around, I think I finally like for sure figured out like what is our goal. Our goal okay. is to like ignite all those towers. That is the point. All right. So how we go about doing that is entirely... Oh, I really do like the little fireplace area. That's nice. How we how we go about that is entirely up to us. Okay. But what I think we should do is we should pick a an area and just search around it until we can find the... The uh, tower. The tower. Once we find the tower, teleport back to our place in Capital Valley. Repeat ad nauseum. A solid plan that will further be refined as these 100 days tick by. Our first target is to find a tower in the area of the map known as the Heartwood. That village that we found with the huge hole in it back during day 20, that's in the Heartwood area. Speak of the devil. Familiar territory does make a good place to sleep. Day 41 and we've got to be getting closer to that tower. Maybe with a good jump cut, we could find the tower. I love how thick that forest was. It was a good forest. You want to ascend this mountain and see if we can see anything? Yeah, I don't know. I'm not quite sure. Purple mountains. Well, we can only see so far. It's yeah. A real shame that I had to set the render distance so low on, on the server. Hmm. It's a very purple mountain. It is so purple. Boss would be proud. So the... Ah, yeah. I included that clip as a shout out to my friend and fellow Minecraft YouTuber, Boss Builds MC. He's the arbitrary boss of Minecraft. In the distance, there's another tower. This whole time, this thing was practically on our doorsteps less than a day's trip away. I am giving this map all of my anger at this point. We ascend the tower with just a little bit of parkour skill. It's just a little stressful being this high up. Our diligence is rewarded as we teleport into the terminus, linking the heartwood to the fast travel system. Also, time fell off a vine. Ha 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 ha. Everybody point and laugh. Ha 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 ha. That's 9.4% of the towers linked. After linking back up with time, we decide it's time to go after the South Heartland Tower and complete the set. Waking up to day 42, spirits are high. We've made more progress in two days than we ever did on that god-awful expedition. Finally, I feel like we just made progress. Went exploring for four hours, and then we literally jumped on and figured it out in less than 30 minutes. Well, to be fair, I had to Wikipedia it, so don't go calling uh, me a genius yet. But uh, I don't consider fine. cheating to look up the Wikipedia, because it's not like I'm looking for... I'm not looking, oh, you know, like I said, the coordinates were there, but there was nothing that I was, a, I never copied down any coordinates. Maybe looked at some images of stuff, but generally speaking. Also trying to figure out the lore of this place, because at some point I'm going to have to explain this in the video. And I'm not right. looking forward to it. You have to pretend you know what you're talking about. I'm going to disclaimer, like, first off, I used the wiki because I couldn't piece the shit together. <laughs> Wasn't about to spend... 20 hours to trying to learn about this game. Yep. Disclaimer, I used the wiki to figure out what was going on. Leaving the North Heartland area, the South Heartland area is what experts in the field might call a barren wasteland. Gone are the green old growth forests. They are replaced with a barren hellscape of canyons. This place is what I would lovingly call absolutely unpleasant to traverse. I hate it here. This place is awful. Slight segue to go look at that ruined town. Neat place to visit, but I wouldn't want to live here. Day 43, poking around these ruins, I find a really cool pair of pants. The pants have Respiration 1 on them. How can pants make you breathe better? That's it. My immersion is broken. I am leaving this town and never coming back. 
Unfortunately, that means going back into the wastes. Ruined? To navigate. Uh, yeah. This whole place is going to be pain. Yeah, let's just... I definitely want to just find the power in here and leave. Yeah. I'm all for climbing mountains, but... I don't want to go down a mountain just to go back up a mountain. The other side of one, yes. To make it 20 blocks. If we had oh, more blocks hey, on us... we found the teleporter. There it is. Wow. Perfect. How? Love it. <laughs> was... Well, the advantage of... The... The advantage of this area is that everything's flat and it's just down. So. There is nothing flat about this area. Look at the canyons time. The canyons. Yes, but they're all downwards. They're not upwards. <sighs> you, know, you know what? I'm we doing... found it. I can't believe we found another one. One brief parkour later, and there's the top of the South Hartwood Tower. 12.5% of the network linked. This was a pivotal day for our adventure. Time discovered that the torches on the floor of the map are where the towers are roughly located. Here is that aha moment. Okay, I think I see what's going on here. So you see that, so you see the Central Valley one, Capital mm -hmm. Valley one. Then there's that one that's in the water block. Yep. It looks like it's in the water block. That's that Capital City one. That makes sense. So basically, if we go directly south from there, from the looks of it, we'll probably find a uh, Palisades. Oh yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah, so let's head to Capital. It's on the second big area. Okay. Yeah, so let's go to. Yeah, you're right. It is on the second big. All right, so that's the central towers. Combining what we know about the towers on the map and the Dramal map showing the regions of this world, our strategy was simple. Pick a tower that we know the location of and come up with a general direction to head for. Why didn't we do this earlier? Why did we go at this without a plan? It's good to ask questions, just not those questions. Returning to Avsol, we head south. On day 44, our trek south continues, and I'm thinking to myself, I hope this works. If we can't correctly navigate with that map in the terminus, this is going to be a very unproductive 100 days. Oh look, the tower! Using the power of advanced engineering, we make it to the top and activate the tower. Hit it. 15.6, look at that. Look at that. Progress. Okay. Now knowing how to successfully navigate the world, we can really start hacking away at these towers. Our next destination is west to the Therax Plains. To get there, we're gonna need to cross some mountains. Fortunately, there is a totally non-suspicious mountain pass that is totally safe for us to cross through. Day 45, we continue our way through the totally non-suspicious mountain pass that is totally safe for us to cross through. Mountain passes make way for a cool pine forest with nothing at all happening in the past. Told you it was safe. Oh look, a farmhouse for time and I to kick down the door and loot everything inside. To show my appreciation to the family of villagers, I harvest their wheat field. I don't give them the wheat or replant the seeds. Yay, sustainable farming practices. Day 46 continues our adventure for the Therax Plains Tower. Wait, hold up. Turn left. What do you see? Holy sh I would have gone right by that. Good eye, man. I didn't even see that. I'm going to look at this first. Oh, yeah, of course. There's a spawner. Spawner. Oh, but it's in the middle of the day, so it doesn't really matter. Protection 2 book. Hmm, not bad. This is when I begin to realize that each one of these towers has a small challenge that you need to figure it out to make it to the top. Usually something to the effect of parkour or a small dungeon that you have to fight through. It's a nice touch, a small challenge before your prize. Soon enough, Time and I ascend the tower and claim our reward. That's 18.8% .8 of the towers linked up. Now Time and I have a rhythm. Plan out the next tower to go after, adventure to that tower, Activate it, rinse and repeat until the map is beat, or we sink into utter madness and insanity. In so, that little body of water? Yeah, so why don't we <clears throat> cross whatever body of water that is, go into the swamp, try and find that one, then head south and get the last Therax planes. I'm game. All right. This is what a typical planning session sounds like. To the swamp we go. 
Leaving the tower, we make our way west. Not even 60 seconds of traveling away from the tower, and things start looking oddly familiar. I mean, it just showed on this map as a large body of water, but yeah. according to that map, it did. Oh. Another castle. No, that's the castle from before. Is it? Yeah. The exact one? Yeah. That's the fort. Are, are you kidding me? We passed right by the friggin' teleporter. Again. All of my anger is being directed towards this map right now. On the bright side, it is nice to be back in the fort to resupply and dump off extra resources we've picked up. Continuing west of the fort, we cross the river and get the swamp in sight. Continuing west, we soon see the tower, and it's way up there. This tower's gimmick is that it is situated on top of this mine, which is full of spiders and zombies. Yay. Then ascending some sort of decrepit catwalker staircase. No problem for two ah, seasoned Minecraft players. And soon we reach the top of the Namaj Swamp Tower. 21.9% of the towers are linked. That's two days in a row we've activated towers. Our next destination is straight south to a tower that appears to be on a little island. The best way to get to the island is on a boat. Soon night falls and it's time to flip today. Day 48, will Time and I find a tower three days in a row? Yes, yes we will. This tower is situated on a really neat little tropical island. The challenge to get up to it is whether or not you pass the scaffolding check. That is the South Therix playing field added to the network. The Terminus has 25% of the towers linked to it, but that's when a wrench gets thrown into the works. Explore it a little bit. Oh. Scientific, Scientific progress. 25% network linkage achieved? Auxiliary nice. research facility network terminal online? Oh! Locator dispensed. Officer presence requested for manual on-site reboot? Does that mean we gotta go back? Because it's uh, as viz. Oh, come here. Dude, come here. Look at this. Oh, oh, oh. One of the locators. It's different. It is. Whoa. Do I get one too? Uh, no, it looks like it's just me. At 25% towers connected increments, we trigger a story portion of the map. In this instance, Time and I need to find a database at Sol Mavir and activate it to progress the map. Looking at the coordinates, we determine that the facility we need to go to is east of the Capital Valley teleporter. Following the compass east out of Capital Valley and into Purity Peaks, we soon arrive at the facility. Yep. Yeah. This looks important. Temporal ruins. Temporal ruins. An ancient city of science and knowledge locked in a temporal stasis preventing structural degradation. Oh. So, cool. So is this what everything looked like before? I mean, this does this not look a lot like the Terminus? You're right. As far as the, the construction? Making our way into the ruins, we come across the button to reconnect the network. Now that the network is reconnected, we can read any holotext and figure out what people were doing here at this facility and what its purpose is. In this holotext, it talks about how drones were used to locate the tear which supplies all this civilization's primal energy. Simply put, primal energy is this civilization's energy source. But what is the tear? These questions will have to be pondered. Day 49. Time discovers that these little entropic sycophants drop primal pearls. This maps ender pearl, which are used in a number of custom recipes. There's a really large dome structure that's demanding our attention, but unfortunately, it's blocked with bedrock. We'll come back to this later. Navigating around this place is a pain, as most of the pathways are all shattered, and I didn't bring any blocks with me. Impeding progress further is this weird mob that's got a lot of health and walks towards you at a menacing pace. Making our way 
into one of the lab areas, we discover a hollow text explaining that that weird mob is possibly a primal walker. There is also a device here called the temporal engine. What would happen if we threw a pearl into the engine, the notes ponder? I understand this hint fully. All right. Is this the thing that they wanted to throw a pearl in? It looks like it. Let's see what happens. Whoa! Did you... You literally threw it at it? Yeah. Where did you go? I don't have any pearls, so... I'm in the... End. Oh. What? I'm not in the end. I don't know where I'm at, but I'm scared. Do you have more of those pearls? Yeah. Do you There's want to a ticking teleport? clock in here, and it makes me very uncomfortable. Oh, God. Um... It won't let me get back that way. Can't TP to me? I'm not going to. Uh, no, I'm not I'm not going to. Okay. But That's fine. I I don't the pearl's not working to get me back. But I'm in like a Ooh. weird look around, maybe you'll find some chests or something that'll Oh yeah, I'm in the end. I am in an alternate dimension or possible future of this timeline. Then I have the brilliant idea that maybe in this alternate dimension, we can get into that dome structure. And sure enough, there is a hole in it. The trick with this dimension is that after a short while, you are teleported back into the overworld. Now it's a race to the teleporter, back into the alternate dimension, and to get to the dome before time runs out. Fortunately, we get to the dome with plenty of time to spare. Looking around in yep. here. Okay. What's Time Lord? I feel like we gotta. Oh, oh, oh my goodness! We teleported That's... back in. But look, look what turn around. What is this? What the hell's Time Lord? Time Lord, wibbly thing? wobbly, timely line. Explored the temporal engine. <gasps> oh. Left. Oh. Blade fragment. Left. Is that for the the ultimate weapon thing? The cutting edge of this half spearhead slices through tough canvas on contact. You probably shouldn't hang on to it for too long. Discovered one half of the Myth Breaker's blade. Oh, that must be the super weapon. A lot happens in a short period of time. We get back from the temporal dimension, make it into the dome, and pick up the second of three pieces for the super weapon back in Avsel. Continuing into day 50, we find a holotext that confirms that this is a piece of the super weapon, and that the previous civilization never figured out a good way to charge the weapon. To keep the weapon from getting into the wrong hands, they separated it into three pieces and hid it at different research facilities. Going upstairs, we find another holotext highlighting the fact a researcher invented some flying wings. In a chest, we find those wings. Time and I have unlocked the elytra. You'll see this in the campaign much later on. With all of the facility explored, our elytra and super weapon blade in hand, it's time to head back to Capital Valley. On day 51, we return to home base to dump off stuff and prep for our next outing. Now might be a good time to check in on my audio guy. How we sounding over there, my dude? All of these plugins and he still sounds like shit. With my feelings thoroughly shattered, it's on to day 52, where Time and I are headed north to the Gulf of Dramal Tower. Now this is another tower I get angry at. Not because it was hard to find, but because... Wait, wait, I'll let in-game me explain. Ruins to our left. We explored that already? No, we couldn't have. Wait, I was gonna say, I don't think we've been to this part. Oh, this is a whole lot of ruins. Yeah, no, we've been here. Have we? Yeah, we came here on like our big hundred our hour. First... Yeah. Okay. On our first adventure, yeah, we've totally been here. And we thought that this was the marshes. Are you me? I see it. We were so close to so many towers, but somehow managed to miss them all. This tower is being protected by a group of pillagers. 
Once again, we need to teach them that many things that they do in life are okay. However, living is not one of those things. Kick down the door, kill everyone in sight, and go to bed. Day 53. The activation of the Gulf of Jamal Tower brings our linked towers up to 28.1%. With that tower linked up, all four central towers are activated. Feels good, man. Our next target is southeast, back to Purity Peaks. Arriving in the Purity Peaks area, we see a cool structure up on a hill, and of course we're gonna go look at it. Day 54. After much climbing, we finally arrive at the structure. Why does everything in this map have to be on the top of a hill or climbed? Can't we have a nice structure that's, oh, I don't know, at floor level? In the chests are a golden apple, which is vital for some crafting recipes and a really good bow with infinity. Was it worth the side trip you might be asking yourself? Eh, would be my answer. This is also the map where I learned you don't take fall damage in a boat. Heh, <laughs> the server kicked time for flying. Good server. Oh look, another tower, and it's a parkour tower. I'm gonna try to do it for what it is. I just want to get to the top, you know. Hmm. At some point, you just oh, want. My... Oh god! Nailed it. What have we learned? That I couldn't figure out that jump. And it sounds like you couldn't either. Don't you sass me, time. That's 31.3% of the towers linked. Our next stop is north to Aklaroma. Day 55. Oh look, a little town. You should know the drill at this point. Kick in the door and loot everything that's not nailed down. Oh look, giant flowers. Surely this must be Aklaroma. Oh look, another, another town. We'll spend some time on this one. Achievement get, the painted city. Welcome to the City of Dusps. Oh look, they have a city garden. This is a lovely town. Why the hell didn't I make home base here? Don't tell anyone, but we did engage in just a little bit of grave robbing. It's... Consensual asphyxiation. I'm not one for grave robbing, but... I'm afraid to... Hold <laughs> <laughs> it. Hold it. Oh, sh... That's awful. Oh, wait. Wow. Rip Jack Ooga Booga. I'm betting a jack o' lantern. J Bo Chris. Wait. Those it's a Romans. Pig. It's a pig in the Ooga Booga. There's a cross and some. That makes sense. Rip redacted. Data expunged. Dren Malboon. I'm the bomb prior to death. TNT. TNT. Oh, blast protection for chest plate. Truly, some absolute bangers in this graveyard. Day 56. Regrettably, we do have to leave Dusps. We have a tower to find, and we're on a timetable. Oh look, the tower. And it's a parkour challenge. Most excellent. This is why we brought scaffolding and water buckets. Aklaroma's tower is now linked, bringing our count up to 34.4% of towers linked. Next stop is east, in the Verrucht Plateau. I think it's pretty clear how the rhythm of this adventure goes. Day 55, leave Aklaroma and make it to the Verrucht Plateau. Find the tower off in the distance, looks like it's a scaffolding check. Activate tower, 37.5%. Tight, quick, efficient, work. Day 58, time and I find a dungeon and the structure is big enough that I think we might find something good. This place has an eerie vibe. No music is playing. No torches are lit. It's just uninviting. Oh look, a chisel block and, oh, scary staircase with an ominous guy at the bottom. I don't wonder what's in, under the, oh. Oh, there's something down there. It looks like a skeleton. You got your big scary sword? Uh, yeah, let me get my whip. Yeah. Okay. Oh, there's something. Hmm. It's leading us yeah. through. Another one. Golem of Insight. That was insightful. 
Oh my goodness. Oh crap. Oh my goodness. Look at all those archers. At last, a good and proper dungeon. With time and his bow, we soon make short work of everything in this room. Making our way to the next room, I have five golems, all with bows and arrows pointed at my head. Fortunately, we do make short work of them. Our reward for clearing this dungeon is a bunch of scale, gold, iron, and some diamonds. Hidden behind some glass, I find a special helmet. This allows the wearer to detect and outline mobs through walls. Kind of useful in these tight dungeons. Day 59, the pattern resumes as normal. Make it to the next area, High Fall Tundra. Get some big Norse vibes from the area. Oh, there's the tower. And the challenge is trial by combat. Time and I quickly dispatch the mobs, and soon we're linking up the High Fall Tundra Tower. That's 40.6% of the towers linked up. Straight north. East. Straight north and okay. we hit the Frozen Bites. Let's do it. I'm still good. Yeah, I'm still good. Day 60. We leave the High Fall Tundra behind for the Frozen Bites. Fortunately, travel was swift and uneventful, and soon the tower is in our view. This challenge is parkouring over ice. Why... why does it have to be ice? If we fall, lava. I choose to take the cautious approach, as time has discovered he can't bounce. I soon make it to the top of the tower and link it to the terminus. 43.8% of the tower is linked. Our next stop is west to the fair cycle, which can be best described as absolute unmitigated hell. Day 61. After successfully getting time out of the lava pit, he went spelunking, it was time to move out. The trip to Fair Cycle started off pleasant enough. We climbed this huge mountain and made it to the sweet mountain pass. We're riding high, thinking this won't be so bad. A few mountains here and there, but nothing too bad. That's when we see what can be best described as an absolute godforsaken affront to good map traversal. Trying to traverse these chasms is almost impossible. Eventually, Time and I decide to brave the ground level where all the mobs are. I was kind of hoping to hear that you didn't bounce. <laughs> I did bounce. I splash. Yep. Run. Ciao. To that little thingy, McJigger. Oh my god. Just keep freaking running and don't stop. If one of us makes it there, that's a win. Traversal down here is somehow worse. I don't know how, but it just is. Eventually, we get out of the weird floating mountain area for a more regular mountain climbing experience. I hate this place. All of my hatred is now being directed at this place. Day 62 is much of the same. Traversing mountains trying to find the tower. Giant mountains eventually give way for really cool ice spires. Look at this area. This is such a cool way of doing a frozen hellscape. I love it. Oh, damn. This looks real important. Symmetry, 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 symmetry. It's literally 50 pages of symmetry. What's well, not symmetrical? Iron helmet, snowballs, more pearls. Four 50-page books filled with nothing but the word symmetry. Has... has anyone checked on the devs lately? Are you okay? Do you need help? Is that a pipeline? That doesn't belong out here, does it? This is oddly industrial for this area. Why is it here? Mysteries to be pondered, I guess. On day 63, Time and I found our first indication that people are out here. Well, a single creeper anyways. Better now. Did you get this one? Oh, no, I didn't. Oh, Gimli's axe. Wow. This weapon fitted with true ice from a raid on the Coven of Low was at one time the most legendary weapon in all of Fane Cycle. Sharp as diamond, it could cut through nearly anything in one swipe. Nice. I guess I'll take that. Yeah. That's a nice axe, but I'm attached to the one I've got here. Finally, off in the distance, the tower. It looks really short. Is the snow really that high here? Brutal. 
Climbing right up, as there was no real puzzle or challenge to access the tower, we connected to the terminus. 46.9. Nice. We determine our next stop is going to be the tower at Mount Yavlix. This ends up being a giant mistake. Well, northwest we go. We stop in at this little house and see a lady about looting all of her possessions that aren't nailed down before we continue on. Well, let's head a little northwest. We know pretty much that this thing is going to be in the center of this just stupid mountain. mountain. The up edge is going to be a huge pain to climb. Better it's going to be inside the mountain, you know? Now that we need would to go spelunking. 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 Stay with me mm. now. Spelunking. But dunking. I hate you. Every fiber of my being. Is this where the oil pipeline? Certainly looks like something. Now I'm getting Call of Duty vibes. There's the giant pipeline again. It's headed towards Mount Yavlik, so we end up following it for a bit. It goes through some hills, around some mountains, over a small pass between a couple of mountains. Right now, Time and I are thinking, this is probably super important and we should see where it leads. But that will be a task for tomorrow. Day 64 is when we discover something, and this map story takes a darker turn. I'm going to have this whole clip played of our discovery. Oh, it does go down. Weird. Whoa, that's a lot of sleep. All right, ready? Yep. If I got this. I been revoked from driving so uh it looks like there's some more pipeline Ooh, shit. i am there nope, we go nope got it this time tall ice spikes and oh, oh whoa. okay um <clears throat> i think we've answered the question here mountain of holes Mount emanates a strange resonating energy. You feel empty. Journey to Mount... Yavhix. Oh, this is going to be a dungeon crawl. Yup. I bet you it's going to be in the center core of it. Yup. Got a lifty up here. Nope. Oh, Oop. bedrock. We got a, uh, a, a screen thing. Oh no. Lore. Final transmission. Door's been shut and the seal's been placed. Nothing can leave the mountain and nothing shall enter. The hell? We are defend the door, defend the seal. A powerful concentration of primal energy will shatter it, unleashing whatever lies inside. We will not allow for this. For any lingering personnel on this channel, know our purpose. Hail to... Oh boy. I found a manifesto of the Gatewatch. Well, oh, I'm vaguely curious. Sender. Uh, I was just talking about their responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Annihilation Protocol. In the event of a complete communication loss, CCL, Gatewatch is to enact the Annihilation Protocol AP. The CCL most likely means some catastrophic has struck. This is our ultimate defense. In, intact the seal, send final transmission, take up arms, attempt comms, reconnection, kill all on sight, wait for the all clear. All on sight. <laughs> in this frozen wasteland, in the most northern part of this map, sits a door that is not only keeping people out, it's keeping something in. Whatever is in here, it's worth killing over. If this thing gets out, it could spell annihilation for this whole world. But what is this thing? Time and I try to find a way in with no success. Unfortunately, daylight is fleeting, and as we go to sleep, the mysteries of Mount Yavlix remain. Day 65, the unsettling drone of the mountain continues as Time and I discover a strange puzzle. They too greedily. The plot of every mining horror movie ever. Feed the notes of the nihilist to the blackest void. Throw yourself into the empty abyss. The nihilist. There you go. 
What is it try? True. Ow. Okay. Apparently, I'm not nihilistic enough of a sacrifice. We never did figure out this puzzle. It does linger with me, and I do think, what kind of being or thing would want to consume nihilism? I don't like this place, and the hunt for the tower continues well into the night. On day 66, with no tower in sight, I take a gander at the wiki and learn that we aren't supposed to be at Mount Yavlix. Yet. This is the end game area. None too soon, we leave the mountain and go back to the terminus. We have made a lot of progress in this map, but it's time to return to home base. We need to dump off and restock for our next adventure. This process is usually an all-day deal. We have a lot of stuff that we gather and a lot of resources that we expend when we're out looking for towers. Namely, we go through a lot of food. Wow, days really do go by fast. On day 67 through... <coughs> Funny number day. <laughs> Things were a bit of a mess. At this point, we're almost ready to head out. Before that, I do take a look at what it would take to make the chest plate that I'm using for time, as it's really good. We're short on some diamonds. Other than that, the recipe looks pretty simple. Finally, we are back on the road, and soon we're in the Terminus plotting our next move. All right, the so plan of attack, um, orient the correct way. I say let's go to probably Verrect Plateau and go straight Run straight south. over and go straight south. right over the mountains. Yeah, I like it. Our mission today is to start by finding the tower in Grand Pike Canyon. This area is another really pretty old growth forest area. We do get a little turned around. These giant flowers don't seem like something you would find in a canyon. Time and I are lost. We have no idea where we are. There's this giant bay we ended up at that I don't see on our map. We, at this point, couldn't navigate our way through a paper bag. Figuring that we must be close to the tower based on a picture I found on the wiki, I park my boat and try to get a bird's eye view on the top of this hill. Jackpot. And it's a parkour tower. Hell yeah, brother! This tower is really cool as it looks like a giant tree has grown around it. Soon enough, I'm at the top of the tower, I throw down a bucket of water for time and link up the Spearhead Forest? Looks like we missed Grand Pike Canyon. We're actually at the tower south of Grand Pike Canyon. Something's happening again. Whoa. 50% on funny number day. Exodus Citadel Network Terminal Online. Oh, there it Whoa. is. There it is. So we're staying focused though, right? Yeah, I want to clear all of this for I want to clear the west side first. The east. Yeah, the east side. Negative 2500, 71, 2200. As is tradition, every 25% we clear, a new story area opens up for us. We'll check that out later. We are on a mission to link up all the towers in the east side of the map. Back north we go to find the Grand Pike Canyon Tower. Day 70. I got a month left and then I'm gonna start script writing and editing this shit. I'm gonna try to start script writing like this weekend. Mm. This is already gonna be brutal considering I can't remember half of what we did. Then watching through footage is gonna be pain. I'm gonna say, let me know if you want me to try to help jog memory. Yeah, I don't know yet. Day 70. For those of you curious, Time and I recorded 20 hours of footage that I had to watch back through and pull out the juicy bits. Hey, look, a cool structure. Oh, it's a museum. That's so cool. Oh, it's the history of this land and its people. Oh, how neat. Is it wrong to be looting the exhibits? No. Alrighty then. We're leaving the museum like the British leave most countries, with many things in their pockets that don't belong to them. We continue the quest for the Grand Pike Canyon Tower. This looks like a canyon. We must be getting close. Does this look like it's painful to navigate? Yeah, it totally was. Oh, thank God. It's finally the tower. And it's on top of a giant pyramid. 
It's another dungeon crawl tower. The front door appears to be locked. Good thing I have a universal key. It's a pillager pyramid. Why? Why did it have to be a pillager pyramid? Outside of the constant onslaught of mobs, this is a nicely built pyramid. On day 71, after finally making it up on the outside of the pyramid, we can activate this tower. Finally, the Grand Pike Canyon Tower. That's 53.1% of the tower's length. Our next stop is in the Black Jungle. That sounds very friendly and inviting. Teleporting to the South Heartwoods, we make our way east. The Heartwood eventually makes way for tropical waters. This should be a short hop to the jungle. Well, it would be if we didn't spot something neat. Boots I'm wearing. Ooh, I like these trees. Yeah. Whoa, whoa these whoa. are some... Whoa! That's a big tree. In a village. Or a ship. Village. Whoa, there's the house. Look at all the boats want... here. I really like that architecture. I do too. It kind of gives me like a Japanese vibe. Yes. That's one large temple. Welcome to Kiln, where offerings can be made to the goddess Virtuo. This is honestly a really neat place. The whole island is a neat place. Well, that's a really good leather helmet. Further exploration of this area is warranted. On day 72, it, is that an Avatar The Last Airbender reference? Map of the year, hands down, it wins, done. Unfortunately, this is a silly place and we must leave and stay focused. We cannot be sidetracking for anything whatsoever, and that's a really big city. The City of Tides. We have discovered Feartid. If you thought the last place had Asian architecture inspirations, you ain't seen nothing yet. This place is massive. It's a maze of gardens, houses, and of course, loot. Being the lovable scamp I am, I decide to kick down the door of the Imperial Palace and do what the Mongols could never do, and loot the palace. Of course, I need to use my universal key to get in. I tried to grave rob the old Empress's grave, but she must be in another place since NOTHING was here. What's the point of being morally dubious if it doesn't profit me? Further looting of the palace does, however, net me a diamond. Overall, a disappointing haul from a palace, but that diamond, though. Day 73, our adventure must take us elsewhere. We have a tower to find, after all. And there it is, on an active volcano. How very thoughtful of the developers. Thank you, thank you. Fortunately, someone had the foresight to install stairs. My legs? I don't think they want us to parkour over lava, do you? They want us to go this way. Thank goodness I had the foresight to carry a bucket of water with me literally everywhere. Before long, through the power of scaffolding, we have linked the Black Jungle Tower to the Terminus. 56.3% of the towers are linked. Hey, that's all of them. Nice. But let's go hit up... Here's the Black Jungle over here. Okay. Let's go straight south, and that'll be the, uh, Sard. Sard. Ah. Uh, next stop, south, to the island of Sod. Let me hit you with some of the high points of getting to that island. We find this sick temple in the middle of this lake of lava. Inside are a bunch of mobs and this super cool Fire Aspect 3 scythe that I end up taking. Since my skin is of course that of the Grim Reaper, this, this seems pretty appropriate. Day 74, Time and I make it to the southern coast of the Black Jungle and before long the island of Sod comes into view. We climb a few of the mountains of Sod trying to find the tower with no luck. Day 75, the hunt for the tower continues. While we don't find the tower, we do find a fragment of rage. If we find five of these fragments scattered around Sod, we can reforge them into a sick blade. Unfortunately, we never get around to finding and forging the blades. Had we had more time in this challenge, I would have done it. I love how there's always something to explore and look at in this map. Look, here's an ancient forge precariously placed over the mouth of a volcano. Oh, there's the tower. And this one's a parkour tower. Oh goody, parkour. You're the person for it. Like the really bad kind of parkour, not like the good mm. kind of parkour. Like the ice over a lava pit kind of parkour? It might as well be. <laughs>
Actually, yeah, we're probably lucky that I'm the one that handled it. <laughs> Enough said. I only mean the greatest of disrespect, you know? Mm-hmm. For those of you keeping track at home, I crushed this parkour challenge first try. The island of Sod Tower linked to the Terminus. 59.4% of the towers linked. Uh, this video's starting to get pretty lengthy. Uh, we should probably check in on my video guy. How you doing, buddy? Because tonight will be the night that I am fall for you. Don't need to change my mind. <laughs> uh, on day 76, Time and I look at getting a second Elytra made up for him so we can hopefully explore faster. We are three quarters of the way through this challenge and we still don't know what the end game looks like. We are just shy some glass for wings. Now it's time to check out that compass that we got back at day 68. The coordinates put it somewhere in the Menage Swamp. As we follow the compass, I ponder as to what the point of these bases are in the larger story. The hell is this taking us? I think the big point of going to these different places is to get those shards of that uh, super weapon. Mm-hmm. Those are giant cattails. Oh, yeah. Giant cattails could only mean one thing. Someone spilled miracle Grow everywhere again! Also, we arrived. Achievement get. Get all that remains. Welcome to the Exodus Citadel. What is the Exodus Citadel, I hear you ask? Don't know. Stop asking questions we haven't found answers to yet. Unfortunately, this trip took the whole day. Day 77, we quickly find the manual network link button. Holotechs in the area are now online. There is a hole here that we suspect is where we need to go. Unfortunately, just Sendiner Bud had me experiencing gravity in new and exciting ways. Making it down the responsible way got us to a room with a hollow text. Yeah, this don't mean anything to me. I am unclear of how to progress forward. We eventually decide our time for right now is better spent upstairs in what appears to be the main base area, in which I find some goodies. Oh, hey. I just found a really cool dagger. Oh. And I also got the advancement. Blue Exodus was so adept at hiding secrets, no one knew they employed an order of assassins until Insomic archaeologists discovered one of these ingenious rune daggers a millennia after every member had died. Null cloaking. Holding this weapon grants the wielder invisibility and makes nearby mobs much less aggressive. Movement speed, attack damage, attack speed. Hey, I found diamond ore. Nice. This dagger straight up makes me invisible. Oh, and time found diamond ore. Nice job, time. On day 78, I admittedly peek at the wiki to figure out how to solve this puzzle down in the basement of the Citadel. We need to arrange the blocks on the wall to match what is shown on the holotext. Doing that yielded some interesting results. Come on, one more. It's a mirror. Oh, that's that's a lab awesome. after you come on keep going i was getting my torches out we're in an old school sewer yeah pipeline whoa you're invisible oh yeah that's the uh, the dagger Cool, huh? That's cool. Let's see. Trucks, tanks, planes, oh my. Infiltrated the Exodus vault. We are here for that fragment, I'm pretty sure, of the super weapon. This, I mean, vault. You see the, the trucks on the side? Oh, yeah. Oh, look it's at that like over an there. It's like an assembly line. 
There's actually stuff in there. Yeah, it's those a are guardians. Looks like a fish tank. Oh look, another hollow text. Yeah, let's see what we got here. Oh, if we do a charge sequence, a fire could happen. Lovely. In one of the side rooms, we have another hollow text, and the facility is flooded and slowly degrading. Hmm. A walled-off part of the base. No passing through here yet. Seeing a flooded area, Time and I chug some water-breathing potions and see if this is the way further into the base. The aquatic security drones tell me, yes, we are supposed to go this way. Of all the beat-to-hell areas in this map, this one certainly got it the worst. Following Time's lead, we do end up on the other side of that wall. Further down the hall, there's more security glass and more drones. This has to be the way forward. With nowhere else to go, diving headfirst into a tank of Guardians seemed like the rational thing to do at the time. With the Guardians dead, we advance forward into what I'm going to refer as the horrible awful room. You see, there are mobs in here, which are no problem. The problem comes here. Oh, I suppose this is just ours to take. I'll take it. I got sent to this dark submerged place to perform a check on the electrical systems. Apparently they've also had some issues with arc leaks. Minor blackouts and minor blackouts and arc leaks are the last thing you want in an underground facility. I've got to be here for a week and all that they have to eat are freeze-dried exodus rations. Not a single fresh vegetable in sight. I'm going to put a complaint. Oh, you cannot make these. Ah, bummer. Did you just flip all those levers? Yep. And it electrified the water. You know what that means. It hurts. It hurts a lot. You see, those levers not only illuminated the area, but they made the water angry at us. Hence, the horrible awful room. Those levers did open up all the security glass and engaged electricity throughout the entire facility. A new route has also been opened to us. Taking us to the other half of the facility, I don't know who the architects were for this place, but I hope they die in a similar maze-like structure to what we had to navigate here. I like the re- oh, um, let's see. Meeting expert, Commander Sitta. Kamaz are reports of increased disturbance within the mountain true? General Kamaz, I'm afraid so. CSD Thressa has requested my presence at status tomorrow just in case. Lieutenant's rink. That doesn't inspire confidence. General Kinas, Kamas. It's precautionary. Oryx will put the seal in place tomorrow as well. So they knew about the disturbance. So the, I'm assuming that's the giant mountain we visited. Mm -hmm. Documentation that something happened at Mount Yavlix. A disturbance of some sort. What happened? There appears to be an abandoned elevator shaft here that was flooded. Good thing we're still packing water breathing potions. I don't know about you guys, but water sections in games have always traumatized me. I don't know where it stemmed from either. Maybe it's just the collective emotion we all share. Looks like we're coming out of the sewer pipe now. Dear God, how big is this place? More importantly, the water bill must be killer. Entering into the pipe, I pretty much immediately get turned around. Thankfully, a little guidance from time, and I soon end up where I need to be. Now, if only I knew where here was. Oh, this is like a control room, it looks like. There are guys in here, so. Simulations run on the blueprints, extrapolated from the eye of failed. Oh design. my god! Shh, quiet, He hits man. hard! Oh, jeez, man. Just kill him. He took me down like half health in one shot. Failed to find the upper limit in the Mythbreaker theoretical energy capacity. Either our simulations are bug or this weapon is truly ultimate. Attempting to connect it to the energy grid for charging carries too much risk. There's a non-zero chance that the weapon could drain our entire energy grid and sever our connection to the source. We need an alternate solution. This projection is a representation of the data gathered from the anomaly by the resonant eye within Yavix and the orig origin of Lord Anir's mania. It is from this data that we assert 
ascertain the shape of a spear, the shape of what would become Mythbreaker, to receive such clear data, something so clearly manufactured by an intelligence from what one could assume is a natural phenomena, it makes us uneasy. The Mythbreaker project would not have been possible without the finest work, the Galvatin Crucible. This construct is what allowed us to forge the blades. Even still, it was only safe enough to forge them. We couldn't risk a gravitation detonation here. Recent scans from the Alphelian crew, however, indicate that we may have found a secondary source of primal energy that we could use to charge the blades with. Interesting. The source? Resonant Eye? Mythbreaker is clearly the weapon back in the repository at the capital, and we got one piece of it in the last facility. The final piece must be here. But what's the Aphelion? And what is the second source of primal energy? What does this all mean? Descending down the staircase, we find the horrible, awful room, Mach 2. It's horrible and awful! Because there's power, and it intermittently turns off and on, allowing you just enough time to swim to the next safe platform. <gasps> I do risk life and limb to open this chest in the horrible awful room Mach 2, and I'm rewarded quite handsomely with some diamonds. Diving down and back up, we make it out of this awful room. Finally, stairs, a straightforward path. I wonder what the lever does. Cool. I think time put it best. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. I don't like this. You got some sort of particles behind you. Whoa. Here, hold this. That's another shard. Right blade fragment. How many pieces are there? The inner edge of this half spearhead are coated with a lattice of delicate primal catalysts. You probably shouldn't hang on to it for too long. Discover one half of the Mythbreaker's blade. So yeah, there's it says half. So we have both halves. We do. But now do we bring them back to Asvol? I think we do. That is all the pieces of the Mythbreaker. I don't know about you, but I've grown rather tired of this place and wish to leave. Making it back up to the Namaj Swamp, we teleport to the Nexus. We are ready to get the three pieces of the Mythbreaker back together. On day 79, we make a stop by home base first to drop off our stuff. We've been gone for quite a bit of time and we need to rest and resupply. I even made time that super sick chest plate I've been using. Now, I wish to dispel a few rumors. Some of you out there, I'm not naming names, might think I made the chess plate because I care about time. <laughs> Wrong. I made him the chess plate so that he could be an even better meat shield. He can't soak up damage if he's dead. With our gear sorted, supplies topped off, and my meat shield thoroughly shieldier, we make our way back to Avsol and the repository. Oh wow, well, this is... Oh. Whoa. Okay, there's one. Okay, so it's inside the thing. See, yep. it's on the shaft now. It is. Okay. up a little, I think. Oh. I love all those sound effects. Do the honor, sir. <laughs> Don't need that peasant weapon anymore. We can make it. Uh, anti-climax. After reuniting the piece, you are struck with by a lack of effectiveness. Is this really it? 
Recipe for Mythbreaker. Greatest creation unlocked. Yeah. I, part of me wants you to hit me with it. It doesn't. Oh wait, do friendly it. fire. Wow. What's the stats on it? Minus four health, minus point zero one five movement speed, eighteen attack damage, and point five attack speed. Wow. Anti climax is right. This is not an impressive weapon, but the weapon still needs to be charged. How we charge it, however, remains a mystery. Day 80, things get back to business as usual with trying to link towers. This time around, our focus is on the southwest portion of the map. Our plan is to go to the Carmine, activate that tower, head to Lauren Call, back to Carmine, and then to the Crimson Gorge and the Hellcrags. With a plan in place, Time and I get to the South Therix Plains, and then to the Carmine. On our way to the Carmine, Time and I really reflect on our experience in this map. And if, so we, we're just gonna... if we like, if we like really knew what we were doing, like during our month long misadventure, we would have beaten this map in under a hundred. I'd say so. We, I mean, we definitely, it was useful for the relics and upgrades that we got, but honestly, I mean, it's not like this has been super difficult. Like we could have done it with just vanilla gear. Yeah. It's cool to have the artifacts for sure, but not required. Yeah. And I like that about the game. Not that I'm not going to complain about having a chest piece that heals me for three health. Three health right. every time I kill something. That's just stupid. But So true. I have yet to find, like, something to warrant using it. Which is a little bit of a bummer. At this point, Time and I realize we should really be using our elytras. Time made his off-camera the sly dog. This trivializes our experience in activating towers. The only downside is that the elytras fly really slow. Before long, Time and I see the tower for the Carmine. It's a blaze fight. The challenge is a blaze fight. Why are there so many blazes? A few minutes later, and only slightly singed, the Carmine tower is linked. 62.5% complete. Wait, what's that upbeat sound crossfading from the background? Oh no. It's, it's montage music! It is. Oh. Security unsecured. With the energy network almost fully restored, you've gained access to the administrative wing. Restored network linkage to 75%. Locator dispensed. Officer present requested for manual on site reboot. Wait, what officer wing? Not here. Uh, I think we got. Is there always particles on this? Yeah, only when there's a compass. It's glowing. Oh, God. What do they want us to go now? They want us to go to the administrative administrative wing. So that's here. So negative 253, 52. So that's up by... Um, so that's like Capital Valley. That's like center of the map. Yeah, that's very close to Capital Valley. I'd probably say either Capital Valley or Gulf of... Let's try Gulf of Dremel. Oh, God, we're secretaries now. Having to go find the administrative wing... Before we go figuring that mess out, it's been a long montage and our elytras are worn and of course supplies are low. It's always nice to relax, resupply, 
get recentered and refocus on our objective. Resupplying takes us right up into day 86. This wheat field over here by home base, I've been slowly expanding, adding more seeds and hoed dirt. It's been a little side project for me since I really think that bread is one of the best food sources in Minecraft. Hashtag bread gang rise up. Day 87, Time and I head over to the capital of Avsol since the coordinates are clearly leading us over there. There's a little confusion as to where exactly we are supposed to be activating this administration wing. At one point, I'm standing a few blocks above where we need to be. Eventually, we find a building in front of the capital with a couple of holes going down. Encountering pillagers down here must mean we're close. That and the compass coordinates are guiding us. Light and green sparkly particle effects. This has to be the right place. There's the button to link the network. We can finally figure out what's going on. New security measures. After a soldier entering the administration wing unknowingly carried a reconnaissance device on her, alchemic security, Adul, alchemic secretary, Adul, ordered a new scanning mechanism to be put in place to prevent further breaches of that sort. The scan didn't pick up the bug because of a, the soldier's armor, so rather than making a whole new mechanism, the new policy was to have personnel strip their armor and hold completely still for a good long time until the clearance alarm goes off. It's not exactly what the secretary asked for, but it's good enough. He'll be none the wiser. What? Hold on. Now get back in here. Coming. I wonder if this is the scanner. Oh, it's working. Oh my goodness. I was right! Finally. Nice. Took a while, but I was finally oh. right. And we can just descend. This place is very administrative. Spying a switch in the main hallway, I hit it to see what happens. Now, the repository and the administration wing are linked together. There's a lot of weird pieces of lore and hollow text down here. There was the discovery of an entity called Him Beyond and a project called Apotheosis that will rival the deities themselves. There's a hollow text on the creation of the Terminus and something the leader of the nation, Lord Anur, is planning. Some talk of the Stasis project that we woke up from all the way back on day one. A ship called the Aphelion is being retired for combat for the Apotheosis. Then there's a really interesting bit of lore. When Oryx first made contact beyond the Terror, we really didn't know what to think. We had so many questions. How did this thing get here? What are its intentions? Are the others like it living within the nothing? As Oryx spoke with the entity, he became unhinged. I don't know why Thressa picked him to join in the stasis project. It seems to me like you'd want someone more stable to be one of those responsible for resuscitating the Empire. I don't know what's going on. It's like, oh, whoa, whoa. Oh. What is that? Uh oh. The heightened terminus permissions. The door in the oh oh. Uh, oh wait, uh, permission restored. User rank. One unread message from Commander Erpine. Transmitting. I don't know what's going on. Help, I know that, that Absol has already fallen, but if anyone is left, please send back up to the Aphelion immediately. Repeat, help. Who's, what's the Aphelion? Aboard the Aphelion. Presence requested. Please prepare to board and travel to the outer tower wing of the Terminus as soon as possible. The Tear? What is this entity? Does this have something to do with Mount Yavlix? Did I just get promoted by flipping a lever? God, if only if it was that easy. Day 88, no sense in keeping the creepy computer waiting. It's back to the Terminus. All right. Outer tower, oh. Outer towers, oh yeah, over here. Whoa. Okay. Hang on, before we go anywhere, like, prepare, just 
Let's make sure we got her. Bonus places. Oh, access to recommend the, uh, direct reconnection. I presume that's what you got to push. Got to push the button to reconnect. To where? Oh. 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 What the? Oh. Okay. What is that? It's well, like it's a, little a little fish. Like a little space. Oh, I'm in it. You're in it. How did you? Oh. Do we push the button? Hold the lever, Gronk. Huh? Oh. You can kind of sit in it if you uh, move appropriately. Yeah. Do we? Oh, you just click on the seats. I have a feeling we're in for a show. Ready? Yep. Clicks the button. What? This is the Terminus? We're in a spaceship right now? I theorized we were in a spaceship a while ago. Where what? the hell are we? The Aphelios is a ship. The Terminus is in space? What the... Whoa! Is that look behind the you. Terminus? Look all around. We're in the terminus. Behind the... us, that's got to be the terminus. Yeah. Then what's in front of us? I bet you that's where we're going. Oh, we got to reconnect it. The spaceships come apart, maybe. Whoa! We're going down. This is the Aphelion, the finest spacefaring craft that I've ever seen in this map. Also, the only spacefaring craft I've seen in this map. Docking on the ship is suspiciously quiet. There are no NPCs to welcome us, no mobs attacking us, it's just quiet. Hmm, an achievement. In thy glory afar, board the Aphelion. Looking around here, there are a couple of different branching paths. The cafeteria, command center, communications and research station, the emperor's throne, living quarters, and the reactor factory the latter of which is blocked off for now. The cafeteria seems like the first logical place to visit. We recorded this late at night and I was hungry. We spot this cool view from space of the continent. Really an impressive build. Finally, making our way into the cafeteria proper, we raid some goodies from the icebox. That's a lot of meat. Very nice. Oh look, a Roomba. That's cute. Leaving the cafeteria, I spot something very out of the ordinary. A lot of rooms. Hey, time. Yes? Uh, you see where my player name tag is? Get over here when you can. Uh, oh yes. That looks like Myself. a tower. That is on 100%. Factory and reactor. Safety precautions book? Did uh, you yeah, check that out? Nothing exciting. A tower? Up here in space? Why is it here? Heading towards the reactor, I open up the door that was blocking us earlier. And then I open up another door that leads into the reactor itself. The way forward is through the reactor. Kind of a tight squeeze through here. Where are we now? How did we end up in some guy's office? Now this looks like the seat of power of someone important. Lord Anyer might have a bit of a complex. Oh yeah, he's got a complex. Okay, uh, yep, you're heading the right way. If what, what my ever so faithful Oryx says is true, we must find a way to save our realm from the slow, creeping enemy that threatens its destruction. If it means I must rule internally over a empire built to stop its advance, then I will gladly bear that burden. Hail to Asvum, and may the will of Dren Mazom guide my blade. I like how they're being very vague about what this thing is. Air's diary. Father said there was nothing to worry about, but I keep hearing scary sounds coming from the painting in my room. Yep. Yep. Why does his daughter's room have a creepy vent? Emerging from the other side of the creepy vent is a slightly industrial creepy room. 
Searching around the room, I find another button which allows us to crawl through an even smaller vent. Why is there lava? OSHA clearly does not exist in this world because they would have a field day with this place. The Emperor is addressing his citizens like, Hey, my dudes, the treasury is bankrupt because OSHA doesn't understand the aesthetics of putting lava in our space station. Finally emerging from this set of death trap vents, we are greeted by the local security constructs. What surveillance? There's somebody important in there. That looks like it. Yeah. All right. Emergency protocols. In the event of an emergency, okay, the surveillance room is the safest place to be. It features heavy robotic reinforcement and backup ventilation alongside ample rations that can sustain a crew for weeks until rescue. So hmm. we need to break into there. New goal. Break into the surveillance office. New shortcut unlocked. Thank God. Oh, look, the bridge. Oh, look, a button. I'm not sure what the button did, but it sure made text appear. I don't know. Oh, hey, hello. You Let's are a out. lost lieutenant. Ooh. Is that a helmet? Yeah, it's a player head. Oh, neat. And he dropped his diamond pants. Nice. Oh, look, another button. Uh, don't click that yet. I want to. We've successfully replicated divine warp magic and integrated into our primal energy network. Now we can seamlessly transport personal freight and even primal energy itself. Oh, interesting. These people are meddling in the divine and I have the sneaking suspicion it did not go well. With great confusion, it is time to refocus on accessing the surveillance room. Oh look, we're back in the creepy room. Hitting a nearby lever, we raise a bridge and gain access to the other side of a room where, conveniently enough, there's just a surveillance vent access door just waiting to be accessed. What is it with this place and vents? Vent access is blocked for some reason. We require an alternate path. Oh look, an alternate path with a push button. Surely, that will do something. Start Veilstone Resistance Test? Uh... Uh... Who would have thought that the most stable material in the realm would be invisible? Veilstone, it's a wonderful thing, but I'm not too certain on its full capabilities. If my, if my calculations are correct, as they often are, highly compressed Veilstone should be nigh indestructible, requiring an absurd amount of energy to fracture. Bedrock. Well, now I kind of want to push the button. Yeah, I kind of want to push the button, too. You set your push. spawn point, right? Yeah, push the button. Convinced. Is this the stuff that the blade is made out of? Leaving the lab, we ascend up into an office building where time does some sweet one-shot on a mob. That's my boy! Time then hands me a compass that he got off of a security drone. I don't know it yet, but this is a pivotal piece of completing this map. We ignore this until much, much later. Where's Lodar? So before you open that, don't open that yet, there's another lore down here. Somehow the aspects are able to teleport to and from Lothar seemingly at will. If Hari thinks that the ginormous energy signal we detected is responsible. She theorizes that it lies deeper underground and the survey drones we've sent out seem to agree. Digging doesn't seem to be an option, but I trust we'll find some way to access it. This is the point in the game where I kind of gave up trying to understand the lore. Crawling through another set of vents, we finally come across the lever to open up vent access to the surveillance room. Now, the way is open. Some slightly sketchy vent crawling later, and we are finally in the security room. The Lord Commander is really none too happy to see us. Between time and I, we successfully convinced the Lord Commander it's time to retire. Okay, well, first things first. There we go. Lord! Fault. Final transmission. The last transmission we received detailed a huge military advance from... Uh, Maleths. 
the hell's Maitlis? He's taking advantage of all this chaos to finally move on Sal and Yur. That sounds familiar. That isn't a place we visited. It might be a town. There are no communications for over an hour. It's terrible. All we can do is sit and watch. I think those are the towns we visited. So here's some open oh. reactor blast doors. Hang on. One more. The final transmission from Eok. Duval was watching the Yavlix feed. Oh, that's the mountain. Holes began appearing all throughout his body until nothing was left. We've lost contact with Yavlix. Comms are malfunctioning. What have we done? So where's Yavlix? Mount. Mount Yavlix. Which one? The, that's the... Oh. Um... Primal Collection Facility? This oh, has holes the, in it. Yeah. Weird. Primary Collection, yeah. The Foundry? So I feel like we need an open reactor blast door and then continue through the vent. Something bad happened at Mount Yavlix. Holes opening up in space-time do not make for ideal working conditions. More vent crawling eventually gets us to the reactor room. This is a very impressive room. Looks like there are a couple of buttons here. Time to experiment! All the way around it. Must be ejected to open pipe. Okay. Exit pipe. I wouldn't be down there. I would. Let's see what happens. Hey, a diamond. I love this map. All the cool particle effects are just amazing to watch. Going into the pipe, time and I emerge into the cold vacuum of space. Fortunately, we have a MacGuffin on our side to allow us to survive. We are actually parkouring in space, outside, on this spaceship. How cool is that? Hey, Time, what do you think of parkouring in space? <laughs> Finally, at the end, it's the room with the tower. Hey, this holotext talks about how to make teleportation work. They need an intermediary zone. That's why the Terminist exists. That's a really cool bit of lore. Exploring around, it looks like there's only one thing left to do. Activate injection sequence. Hmm. Oh, um... Tower sealed, starting injections. Are they going to launch the tower into the ground? Oh, because some of those points... Whoa! Whoa! Did you see that thing go? That was nuts! Because remember how some of those points had doors, but nothing to them. So we just created a new teleporting point. Potentially. Did we push this button over here? The Aphelion? I haven't yet. I found another hollow text. Um, our very first prototype of these phase warp towers lies deep within Mount Yavlix. <clears throat> we hope that this, with this initial spire, we can create a wireless energy transmission network through the terminus. Uh, energy goes hmm. to the Yavlix tower, then to the terminus, and then to every other tower we drop across Dremel. No more costly pipelines necessary. Oh, so that oh. giant-ass pipeline they made, we don't need anymore. So let's hit the button. I wonder where this is going to take us. Lodar. This is a different planet. You found yourself among the gods of this realm, the Senta. Oh no. oh, no. So we dropped a tower onto Lodar. Wherever that is. Checking out that meteor, we get an achievement. The sky is falling. Making our way inland, time finds a gate of sorts, which leads to... We don't know. This is like it. Are we in the realm oh. of the gods here? Yeah, look at that. There's the Earth or Dremel. Find yourself among the gods of this realm. Ascend to Lodar. What the hell is Lodar? I bet you we weren't supposed to mine that. Oops. Live and learn. Wait for me. You're very far ahead. 
This is a very large, very beautiful bridge. This whole area is unlike anything I've seen in the map. The scale and beauty is just amazing. At the end of the bridge, we get an achievement. Pantheon. Trespassed upon Yataj. Sacred place of all divinity. Time and I have actually made it to the realm of the gods. The deities that we have tried to make offerings to actually live here. It's like the Greek Parthenon. This central building seems like a good place to start. This seems to be the seats of power for the gods themselves. Very cool. This back room is where things start getting strange. In this back room, there is a path to the Tower of Dramal, and that's where things start getting really, really weird. Oh, Dremel, I dreams. To... Whoa, are you getting a message? Yeah, dreams echo through your body. Where are you? I'm going up In the, the waterfall. In the absence of silence. No, don't go up the waterfall. That's cheating. Well, is it though? In the absence of silence, there is just climate normal. We so we're both experiencing this at the same time. You picture grand <laughs> branches weaving against the perfectly blank void. I grew tired of silence. I wanted change. I wanted noise. Is this the story of? While climbing this tower, we're getting philosophy to death. We theorize it is the story of the rise and fall of creation. Maybe. If anyone has played this map and has any ideas, please let me know in the comments down below. Upon reaching the top of the tower, there is an offering spot to Dramal, the last of the divine. Are you kidding me? I just endured a literal five minute climb and philosophy throw up for an offering spot. This place is stupid. I hate it. I've wasted so much time here. All of my hatred is now focused on this pretentious deity. Almost lost my cool there. After a very long day 88, it's good to be at day 89. Not gonna lie, time and I bummed around this place for a good while and didn't really find anything of note. However, the architecture of this place is super nice and really pleasing to look at. This place is truly worthy of the gods it once hosted. On day 90, we decide to track down the last couple of towers needed for completion of the map. Enjoy this insight into how the recording and planning process went. Starting here, so this is... Let me make sure I don't sound like garbage. How do you sound? Like garbage. Perfect. All right, so this is day perfect. You got day 90 there. I have the map pulled up. So we're going from... We're going to Ebonfire? We need to go to Ebonfire. Because we got Did Ebony we? Veldit. Yeah. So we need to go to Ebonfire. So... Here's the Where Ebony Veldt Western Towers. So we need to go to, all right, so we need to go east, or I'm sorry, we need to go basically like straight south, I'm sorry, straight northwest. Okay. That's how we start off fresh recording sessions. You're welcome. It just also happened that this planning took all day. So day 89, the mad dash to find the remaining towers and beat the map begins. Our next destination is Mount Ebonfire. You guys know how it goes at this point. Pretty landscape, more landscape, day 92, tower comes into focus, activate Mount Ebonfire Tower, 84.4% towers linked. Next stop is the Tower of Kasai straight north. Look at this landscape, again. I love how unique and distinct these different areas are in the map. Day 93, the Tower of Kasai soon comes into view. For some reason, it's embedded in ice. Activate the tower and 87.5% complete. Next stop is to the east to visit Marijul. Elytras really do trivialize this tower hunting process. Getting into the Marijul region, we soon come across the tower and it's built on a little windmill. How cute. Activating the tower gets us 90.6 complete. This is the home stretch with only two more towers to go and we're done. We can do this in 100 days, no problem. Also, we did two towers in one day. Our next trip is going to take us north. Day 94, we reach the most northern edge of Marijul, and now it's time for a completely platonic boat ride to the Island of Dusk and the Island of Dawn. Look how platonic we are in our little boat. Wow, this is the Island of Dusk. Loving that color palette. 
getting big fairy kingdom vibes from this mountain. Look, there's the tower. Flying over and activating the Island of Dusk Tower gets us to 93.8%. One more tower to go. Day 95, this is it, the last tower at the Island of Dawn. Really loving the look of the Island of Dawn. Again, getting Fantasy Kingdom vibes from this area. Very nice. And soon enough, we come across the tower. Huh, see, there's a classic example, a tree that's half in the water and half not. It goes from pink to green. It's really cool looking. Wait for it, I'm coming in and touchdown. Only 96. What did we miss? Well, just uh, find one that's not lit, I guess. Oh, outer towers. We have not lit up the error. But should be Mount Yavlix. That Mount Yavlix had its own. Something is clearly wrong. We should have been done. That should have been the last tower. What happened? Well, remember that compass from day 88? That's a whole other facility we need to go to. To get to that facility, we have to go back to Lodar. With our compass now pointing correctly, we have a heading to the core facility. Day 96, we have to be getting close to the core facility. Also, I noticed that despite sleeping, it's still kind of dark in this realm. The day-night cycle here is kind of weird. Is there a lower floor? Okay. Apparently so. Uh, go, go down. Down in it. Let me swap my vest. Ancient Enterprise. What, what's in here? Found a core base. Oh, this looks important. That's a door. Oh, oh, we got a member. Oh yeah, take got a out, strip. Hang on. The warp ring installation was once a hydroelectric facility and a lake with, within uh, Kive's domain, now being repurposed to study the strange ring structures, the inscription complex resupplied. Doors open. You ready? Another radar in here. I found another radar for a primal energy radar. For a compass oh. for a primal rent. I don't know what that is, but. Gaining access into the core of this facility, we are presented with a strange room. There's a sign for a station alignment, something that looks like a deactivated portal, and something that looks like a block should go there. It's very confusing as to what we need to be doing. After shamelessly looking at the wiki, huge shout out to the team that maintains that, we need to go to three more facilities, which are conveniently located on this here map. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, there's three facilities around here. Uh, there's the warp ring installation, which was once a hydroelectric plant. The inscription complex utilizes icy temperatures of a large cavern in Lowe's domain to supply Renai catalyst, and then a resupply depot serves as our spaceport in Realma's floating islands. So I took I, a screenshot of that. Yeah. So we gotta go south. I presume we're in the red area. Just when you think you're done, the map throws another curveball. Well, the adventure continues. The facilities themselves are not placed in convenient areas for us to access. It's not until the early morning of day 97 where we see the first facility. It's guarded by an angry horde of on-fire flying phantoms. With great difficulty, Time and I eventually gain access into the facility. That sucked a lot. Energy technicians field and strikes. Alright, so we set up. Sorry. Thank you. Alright, so we set up the transfer relay in order to facilitate our growth on Lodar. We need energy, so while we don't have a reliable way of generating a lot of it, we'll be leeching off the Amphelians reactor. Transfer usually automatic. But in the event of an orbital shift, there is an override switch to the right that will read just our receiver. Flick the switch once. The affiliate hits the orbital apex above the facility every 75 seconds or so to realign it. Once the receiver is realigned, the energy should beam down with each transit. What needs to happen is when the green block fills that console to signal that the affiliate is lined up, hit a button. Simple as that. In the meantime, time ended up finding some diamonds. 
Those will be important later. Oh, got it. Oh, things are happening. I powered, repowered the facility, I think. Is that what the, that button was? Yeah, over here. I looked at that. Oh! Well, I didn't do a very good job at repowering the facility, I guess. Scotty, beam down primal energy. You blew up the reactor. Did we get anything for our trouble? Can we go inside of this now? Are these meteors? Look like it. In another lifetime, I would have been a terrible energy technician. Time to blow this popsicle stand, both in the literal and metaphorical sense. Heading towards the second facility, I'm not feeling very welcome. If those are tombstones down there, how big is what's buried underneath them? Day 98 in the frozen hellscape of the southern border of Lodar, we find the second facility. Accessing it the only way I know how, we gain the achievement, what puzzle do you bear? We have found the inscription complex. And now is when we figure out that each of these three facilities will teach us how to solve the puzzles at the core facility. The previous facility taught us about aligning power from the Aphelion. What will this one teach us? Here's a room. This looks important. Finally. There's, there's another thing. Automated catalyst inscription is wonderful. It requires a lot of upkeep. Every few hundred catalysts or so, we need to replace our diamond lensing source in order to properly refract the inscribing lasers. A cubic meter of diamond is a lot heavier than it might be. The machinery slowly breaks down, introducing dust to refractionation chambers, which creates an uncontrollable matrix for inscribing. Oh, okay. So basically here, diamond needs to go. The diamond block needs to go. Oh, so we're at that point now. No, 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 not yet, not yet, not yet. In the uh, other facility. Okay. Okay, so we need a diamond block to help make the machinery work. It's a MacGuffin and we need it badly. Don't trust me with that. Yeah, don't trust me with it either. No. This place that... Go me. Uh-huh. Some sort of manufacturing process. Master of maintenance. If only we were still around when oh. No. Prepared the inscription machinery. something we gotta hit. All right, all right, all right. Two facilities down, one to go. Grabbing our diamond block, we blow this popsicle stand. More figuratively this time. Day 99, it's north to the third and final facility. Time and I stop for a brief moment to fight some spiders and get some of that sweet, sweet XP to repair our gear. You don't see it as much through the power of editing, but we've spent a lot of time here. Supplies are running low, and our elytras are almost broke. Here's where we get introduced to a fun, exciting mob. This is exactly the good levels that I needed. Whoa! Whoa. Oh, right behind you. Oh, you better power yeah, strike them. Oh my out. goodness. We are leaving. So much for easy mobs. Yep, we are getting the hell out of here. Fortunately, oh, they are everywhere. Fortunately, though, they don't take very a lot of effort to get rid of. There's the next place. True. Go, 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 go. Oh, that's got to be it. Yep. These guys, yeah, they suck, and we'll be fighting a lot of them. Fortunately, they just go invisible and don't actually teleport away, so killing them will be pretty easy in the future. Getting to this facility, we get the achievement, put a rung on it. Day 100. Exploration of the final facility begins. Getting into the facility is actually pretty easy for a change. This is refreshing. Coming around, just checking for anything else valuable. Ooh, another anvil. 
As soon as I flip the... Oh, the repository is updated. As soon as I flip the switch, hydroelectric power generator will cease. This facility's original purpose, after all, was no practical way of piping primal energy off Dremel into uh, Lordar. As it turns out, we didn't even end up needing it. A discovery of Newman Core, which can draw all primal energy we need locally and expand our enterprise here on the Divine Moon. I'm now off to the core facility. Keep following this path. Yeah, I went upstairs. There's another thing. Probably, I think this is going to teach us how to use the... Technician rinse note. There are hundreds of these rings all across Kive's domain, but only a handful seem to actually be active. We've discovered that by pumping energy into them, we can force a active state to be triggered. When the sides glow blue, that means a ring is active. What's curious is that only one ring needs to be activated for its linked counterpart to also reach an active state. It seems that even when inactive, they're always communicating. What's also interesting is that when active, the indicators native to the rings take on an appearance and composition very similar to that of a rentite. Ooh, that is a good book. So that is the ring, so... Uh, you gotta walk backwards into it, apparently. Weirdly, these portals only work if you walk backwards into them. Why, you might ask? Don't know. And with that, we have the final piece that we need to access what's in the core facility. We now know how to align power with the Aphelion, we need a diamond block in place, and once the teleporter is powered up, we need to walk backwards through it. With that, our 100 days in Dramal has come to a close. Many questions still linger. What's in Mount Yablix? What happened to the Emperor? Where is the core facility going to take us? How broken will Mythbreaker be when we charge it with primal energy? All that will be answered in our next 100 days. A huge thank you to all the people that helped contribute to this video and make it reality. Once again, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you can be notified of my next 100 days video. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next episode.